The intent of this video is to unpack the usage, tactics, and combat effectiveness of an airdropped acoustic homing torpedo, codenamed FIDO. This is a part 13 video in the channel's Bombers vs. Submarines Battle of the Atlantic series. FIDO is a codename equivalent of the Mark 24 mine. It was also called Project 61 Mine or Project 94 in some documents. This image shows a pre-production cradled FIDO homing torpedo from a 1946 declassified National Research Committee report titled Applied Acoustics in Subsurface Warfare. All of the images in this video are declassified. FIDO is described as a passive acoustic homing torpedo as described in this 2018 Naval Undersea Warfare Center Division brochure titled Milestones of Innovation. It is passive acoustic since its sensors listen for U-boat sounds only, homing as it will track and target the U-boat. FIDO was categorized as a mine for security reasons. Torpedoes can sonically home in on U-boats by either echo-ranging or listening, as discussed on this page from a 1946 National Defense Research Committee report titled Acoustic Torpedoes. An echo-ranging homing system will send and receive a sound signal from a reflecting body. A listening homing system will just listen to the U-boat sounds only. FIDO adopted the listening homing system. The target must produce sufficient noise for the weapon sensors to detect and home in on the target. The weapon will direct itself towards the noise. The listening homing system is simpler to implement. Deep running subs produce little propeller caps and may be immune to the listening homing sensors. As discussed in previous videos, once the U-boat submerges past 15 seconds, the likelihood of a successful depth bomb attack is nil. This image graphically shows the location of a U-boat after a crash dive from a 1944 Chief of Naval Operations report titled German and Japanese Submarines and Their Equipment. The effective kill zone for an aircraft deployed depth bomb is shaded in this zone. Two aircraft deployed kill stores were developed to attack U boats as they submerged beyond 15 seconds, as shaded in this zone. Mouse trap retro rockets working in conjunction with the plane's MAT sensor was covered in the channel's part 9 video. Retro rockets never lived up to their combat expectations as they were only credited with three U boat kills. The U.S. Anti-Submarine Command had high hopes for the combat effectiveness of FIDO, as discussed in this March 1943 correspondence snippet between U.S. Secretary of War Henry Stimson and President Roosevelt. The Secretary relays to the President, we now have the air-deployed weapons to meet the U-boat threat. He lists Loran navigation, the MAD retro-bomb combination, and the FIDO acoustic homing torpedo. The Allies prioritized the anti-submarine tools needed to defeat the U-boats as shown in this 1981 U.S. Army Command and Staff College report titled History of the Anti-Submarine Measures Division of the 10th Fleet. The Mark 24 mine or FIDO was given a priority level 3 out of 12. This chart outlines the state of the Battle of the Atlantic during mid-1943 from a July 1943 Anti-Submarine Command Monthly Intelligence Report. The x-axis is a month and year from February through September 1943. The left y-axis and the blue line is the ratio of merchant vessel sunk per U-boat sunk from 0 to 15. This ratio peaked at a bit over 12 to 1 in March of 1943. This ratio dropped dramatically below 1 to 1 just a few months later. The first FIDO kill occurred on May 12, 1943, when an RAF Coastal Command B-24 Liberator sunk U-436 with a loss of all 49 hands. The first U.S. FIDO kill occurred two days later when a PBY Catalina sunk U-640 with a loss of 49 hands. And then again, 12 days later, another PBY Catalina sunk U-467 with a loss of 46 hands. The FIDO development program was fast. This chart outlines FIDO's timeline from an April 1997 The Submarine Review publication titled World War II Development of Homing Torpedoes. From proposal to first kill occurred in 17 months. FIDO incorporated four acoustic sensors in its nose. FIDO was 84 inches long and 19 inches in diameter. The total unit weighed 680 pounds. A 5 horsepower electric motor provided the propeller's propulsion. The warhead contained 92 pounds of HBX-1 explosive fill. Note that HBX was selected over TNT or Torpex due to its shock resistance as discussed in this 1946 Explosives and Terminal Ballistics Report. 
HPX's explosive power is considered 45% greater than TNT, whereas Torpex is considered 50% more powerful than TNT, as discussed in this October 1942 Anti-Submarine Command Monthly Intelligence Report and discussed in the channel's Part 5 video. This implies HPX's explosive power is roughly equivalent to that of Torpex. The lethal range of explosive fill to a U-boat's pressure hull is shown in this chart from a 1945 United States Fleet Anti-Submarine and Escort of Convoy Instructions document. The x-axis is the weight of the explosive fill. The y-axis is the distance from the pressure hull. The curves in the body of the chart are explosive fill as either Torpex or TNT. To be lethal, FIDAL will need to detonate within 14 feet of a U-boat's pressure hull. The four microphones were located in Fido's nose to detect U-boats underwater noises. The hydrophones were located on the top, bottom, and at both sides. This arrangement provided some directional homing as a torpedo would travel towards the direction based on which hydrophone sensor provided the strongest signal. The torpedo would steer towards the strongest signal with its movable tail rudder or elevator. If the right-left hydrophone signals were equivalent, then the torpedo would travel straight ahead. A cross-section of FIDO with its various components labeled is shown in this image from a 1978 Naval Underwater System Center report titled, A Brief History of U.S. Torpedo Development. FIDO's speed was 12 knots and its 10-minute search, sea search duration range is listed at 4,000 yards. 4,000 yards equates to 2.3 miles. FIDO was programmed to search in a preset circle and detonate the explosive fill on fuse contact. FIDO's optimum range is listed at 1,500 yards or 0.85 miles, as defined in this 1978 sea-based airborne anti-submarine warfare 1940-1978 through 1978 report. Its success depended on the enemy being unaware of its homing capabilities by usage of acoustic sensors. FIDO could be defeated by running quietly. No drops were allowed where the enemy could observe FIDO in deployment. Attacks could only commence after the U-boat had submerged. The Germans never knew about FIDO until after the war. The loadout of a carrier-based sub-hunting TBF Avenger is shown in this Bombay image. The Avenger could internally carry six sonar buoys, two depth bombs, and a single FIDO. Depth bombs for a su surface Class A attack, sonar buoys for tracking a submerged U-boat, and FIDO for attacking a submerged U-boat. The FIDO store is not shown in this image, but would be attached to the bomb rack here. This image shows the Avenger loadout with a single FIDO and two depth bombs for ASW patrol. This image shows the path of a FIDO during trials from the reference shown earlier. So how effective was FIDO in combat service? Of the 204 attacks against U-boats, 37 were sunk and 18 were classified as damaged. That equates to an overall kill rate of 18%. The U.S. deployed kill rate equated to 22%. In contrast, aircraft drop depth bomb kill rate equated to only 9.5%. FIDO had around twice the kill rate as these depth bombs. There is general agreement that the most effective weapon against submerged U-boats was the homing torpedo. Before the end of the war, FIDO would become one of the Allies' most important weapons. FIDO was responsible for 15% of all U-boats sunk by aircraft. 10,000 FIDO units were ordered, but this was later reduced to 4,000 due to the weapon's combat effectiveness. The torpedo is considered a major success whose achievements have gone unheralded. Once a submarine spotted an aircraft, it usually dived. It then fell victim to FIDO, as discussed in the reference shown earlier. Just to tie up a loose end from the channel's sonar buoy video, the U-boat is closest to the red buoy and traveling south. A new buoy pattern could be deposited in this area. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider commenting, liking, and subscribing to the channel, World War II U.S. Bombers.